What's up, everyone? Welcome to the second episode of Dink It and Sink It, a podcast where you speak it, we drink it. For this episode, I'm here with my friend and cousin, Elijah. So do you want to go ahead and explain a little bit about what we're talking about today? So what we're going to be talking about today is the most brutal ways that we think people have died in the past from research that we've found, not in any specific order. Okay, awesome. So we're going to go ahead and start with today's episode, and every time we say the word die, we're going to drink. So let's go ahead and get started with the first one. So um, the first one is slaughtered and eaten by cannibals, I guess, to say it. But in February of 2000, this woman um, killed her partner or (laughs) ex-partner. It's just funny the way you said that. Her husband? Her ex-husband? Or was it a woman? Not no, specified? it was a guy. Okay. It was a guy. So her husband. But she killed him, like slaughtered him, cut him up into pieces, and then cooked him and proceeded to prepare and serve him to his children. That's so gross. <laughs> I just... Imagine just like asking like, Hey mom, what's for dinner? And she's just like, ask your dad. I don't know. <laughs> like that's just so terrible. And like, there's uh, so many serial killers that also ate people, and it's just like so nonchalant. Like Jeffrey Dahmer, yeah, he ate people. Right. There was like some serial killer that owned like a hamburger shop in Cleveland, and uh, he like would kill people and like grind him up and like serve him in. Like, serve people in his hamburger meat. Gross. But there's this one guy that sticks out specifically. I have it pulled up on Wikipedia. But his name is Armin Mewis. I don't know. He's German, so some whack-ass last name. <laughs> but in 19... um, I don't know. A long time ago. Say a number, I'll believe you. He was born in 1961. So, I don't know. Let's go like the 1980s. Dumb 20-year-old. Anyways, he like found a, a person that was like, he, he told this person, he said, listen, like, if you're down for this, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to eat you. And, and the guy was like, all right, sure. Like, let's do it. And... So, first, it says, like, um, so he and the victim, he cut the victim's penis off, cooked it, not sure if he, like, pan fried it, rose, like, (laughs) not sure. Um, and then him and the other, like, the guy who has no penis now, ate the penis. Ew. Together. Shared a meal. Over wine. They did have wine. Not sure if that makes it any better, but... Very romantic. Um, and then he, he killed the guy and then he ate, like, big portions of his flesh. So this guy was okay. Yeah, it was completely, like, voluntary. It was just okay just to die and then have his body eaten. Yeah, and, like, there was a big controversy for a while, I guess, because, like, it was consensual. Like, the guy was like, okay, like, sure, I'll I'll die. My life's going nowhere right now. Just, yeah, just, just not. Just chop off my dick. Let's <laughs> have some wine. Yeah, so, uh, I, I don't know what kind of mindset you have to be in to be like, you know what? I'm just going to let this guy fry me up, eat me. No big deal. But he did end up going to jail. Um... Even though it was consensual? It was, com- yeah, completely consensual. I wonder, if, like, maybe if they had some paperwork, he made him sign, like, a, a waiver <laughs> before, before saying that he had his consent to cook him. I don't know. I don't know. But he did go to jail. I would say that's a pretty brutal way to go, I guess. Even though, like, once you're slaughtered, you don't really know that people are eating you. I mean, cutting the penis off first. Yeah. And then... Why not, like, a finger or, like, 
I guess there's a bone in the finger. Well, like I just. Or a tongue. Like well, I don't. Know, if you ate, cut his tongue off, he couldn't like eat it though. Yeah, then he couldn't comment on how it tastes. Yeah. So, um, how do you think human flesh tastes? Just a general <laughs> curiosity. <laughs> I bet it's probably pretty tough. Like, uh, I would, but it's also probably pretty salty because of the sweat glands and stuff that are yeah, in your I, skin. I would say it like depends on the like. Are you going after somebody who's like my six hundred pound life? Because like, doesn't fat like melt off if you cook it? Yeah. So like, if you go for someone who's like literally all fat and no like muscle tone, like I feel like it wouldn't be worth it. Like you would have to go after someone who's like the rock. Very muscular. Very muscular. I don't know. I'll just throw some I ketchup like, on I it. I like it's my fine. human medium rare. I actually don't eat steak, so I only eat chicken. So I wouldn't know. Not that we're ever going to eat a human, so please don't come after us. All right. You want to move on to number two? Um, number two, we're going to go with impalement through the anus. Um, so... Uh, Back in like the, the 18th century, they used to use this as a method of torture and execution for uh, traitors of the military, rebellions, and, and uh, capital pun punishment. Um, they would take a, like a stake or a pole or a spear and shove it up someone's butt and then raise that stake and like stick it in the ground and then just let gravity do the rest like just penetrating penetrating straight through the butt up through the torso and out the neck or the mouth and they just let gravity run its course or yeah. God. so in the military they would stick these um traitors or uh, rebellion soldiers or prisoners of war out on the front lines to scare away the other country. And is that where scarecrows came from? The idea of scarecrows came from real people? Yes, yes, I believe so. Oh my god, I hate that. You can use the Wizard of Oz and the scarecrow and the... Oh my god. So I, I did look it up and... Um, how long does it take to die when impaled through the anus? And it's a, um, you go brain dead after about six minutes of no oxygen. Because I imagine it hits the lung somewhere along the way. Yeah. Up. Um, <clears throat> gosh. So after like blood loss and stuff like that, you would typically die in 15 minutes. Which, like 15 minutes out of context i guess doesn't seem like that long but like to just be i mean that's hanging, the... not hanging but just like st sticking around <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know 15 minutes like probably a long time and you gotta think you're probably like sliding down slowly during over the course of those 15 so probably, minutes like, splinters and it's like constantly ripping. Oh my god. That sounds so terrible. That is a terrible way to die. What happens if it like hits a bone or something? I'm sure Does it, it like split. tilt you over and like go around that bone or break that bone? I don't know. I feel like it depends. Like they're obviously entering some sort of like pointed object. Because you can't just enter a blunt object that, I mean what about that video you saw on on Twitter the Twitter video so just for reference there was this video going around Twitter where this guy was in surgery and at first you think it's like uh, birth giving maybe I don't know I don't know but it's like in some different country Russia maybe and there's like this team of doctors this guy just like spread eagle on the operation table and basically they pull out like probably about a, a six inch in diameter, two foot long 
dildo out of this man. He entered it into his anus and uh, could not get it out for whatever reason. Um, so, Why yeah. he put that in there for a, for whatever reason? But in like in the video, the doctor is in like screaming in Russian, like, "How is he not dead? How is he not dead?" and stuff like that. And so, I don't know. Maybe you can insert blunt items into your anus. I don't really want to know. Um, but yeah, I would just imagine that's not a great time. And that's a terrible way to die. Yeah. Okay, so the third uh, topic is what they call the rats. Um, they, they, put a, they place a rat on your stomach and um, they put like a heated, they put a bowl or like a bucket on top of the rat and then they take a blowtorch and they heat that bucket up. Forcing the rat to only have one way out and that's clawing through your stomach and your intestines. I just want to know is, was this before or after the Black Plague? Do we have a year? I actually don't know when the Black Plague happened, but it's just like... Was the Black Plague the rat's revenge on this type of torture? Like, I don't know. Like, you could, you, the rat, you were using them to, like, kill people. And so now, now rats are just going to kill everyone. Yeah. I'm, that's so inaccurate. You know it's because people threw their shit in the streets. I don't. I just don't understand who thought of this idea. Who was like, okay, we have this murderer. We're going to take some rats. We're just going to heat them up. And uh, voila, he's I mean, dead. I mean, obviously, if you were trapped in a heated area and like beneath you was like grass or like dirt, wouldn't you oh. go down? Yeah, I feel like that's pretty human instinct. I guess rat instinct too. It's just like, I don't understand how anyone was dying this way. Like, were they dying from, like, loss of blood? Were they dying from, like, disease after? I, I think it was, it was more loss of blood, and it, was, it wasn't used by, like, the government, per se. I feel like it was used by, like... Was there a government in, like, the Renaissance? I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> by, like, gangs or mobs or... I wonder if this was more used as like a torture technique instead of like wanting to kill someone. Like they would just do it until the person would give them information. Right, right, right. That's so, what they did in the in the movie. Yeah. Well, now we just waterboard people. Um All right, number 4. Number 4. This this one is very interesting. Um it's called scaphism or scaphism. I don't know how it's pronounced, but it's uh, refer referred to as the boats. So uh, they would take you, like strip you completely naked and tie your limbs to two rowboats or tree trunks and then they would force you to drink milk and then cover your body in honey and float you down a river or a lake or a pond and then just let nature do its job and the insects would eat at you and then you'd eventually die from like um, shock or uh, dehydration but yeah that your body would start decaying and it's pretty slow and pretty terrible way to die so i looked that up that just sounds like a long, agonizing death, and uh, I was right. Um, so, according to, like, somebody in Greece, so, like, they use scaphism or scaphism or whatever in um, Persia. Mm hmm That's what I found as well. In Greece. I'm not really sure where per Persia's at. Like, I don't... I know nothing about geography. Please don't hate me. The, the name comes from the Greek word... Scaph, 
meaning anything scooped or <laughs> hollowed out. So basically, they would like hollow out your torso, I'm assuming. That sounds so awful. Um, but it would take about 17 days for you to die that way. Oh, that was a lot of crown. Anyways, it would take about 17 days for you to die by the boats. That's almost like two and a half weeks. That, imagine like in this day and age, if you saw somebody dying like that. Like I wonder if people saw him, like saw a person dying like that and were just like, well. Well. Just turn the other way, like everyone else does with everything else that happens in the world. I don't like know. today, they would have to like block that off. Like, if that was a form of punishment, they would have to block that off from anyone else because someone would go out there and save them. Yeah, I would assume someone would go out and save them. I don't know. I don't bystander effect. Maybe nobody would go out and save them because they bet think everyone else is going to I guess it would just like is the government do this doing this is just random people doing that I don't know serial killers I don't know yeah which that seems a bit messy for serial killers but that's a whole other story don't ask me why I know so much so the next one is uh, crucifixion and apparently only six people actually died as it, it's been documented from crucifixion um apparently they the the romans would start cutting off people's legs while they're being crucified because if your legs are attached you can like push up off the ground to let yourself breathe and and and, and stay alive longer because um, your diaphragm, the, yeah, your diaphragm was more open when you pushed up off the ground. Yeah, I mean it does say like, um, well, I feel like since I was raised like in church, you hear about crucifixion a lot, obviously, and like after you get older, like you learn like the more specifics, and I feel like I remember hearing. You know, I'm not sure how accurate this is, but, like, when Jesus was crucified, they, uh, broke his legs. Mm -hmm. That way you can't, like, push up at all. Mm -hmm. But they're not, like, because they don't want you to die from blood loss. Like, they want you to die slowly. Right. So when it's... you're crucified, you're not actually, like, you're not dying of blood loss. You're dying of, like, you're suffocating yourself because you can't breathe because you're literally hanging by your arms. The, the Romans wanted, uh... They're crucified victims to die. So they broke their legs so they couldn't push themselves up to breathe. Yeah. It just seems like another... People have moved past just killing people. Like, they just want them to suffer at this point, which... I don't know. I mean, I just want to know how people come up with these ideas. I don't, I don't understand. They just sit at their dinner table one night and they're like, oh. They're like, they're doing yeah. one of these like, okay, I know what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to hang him from a cross and and that's it. like. That's it. We'll let people watch him. That's it. Uh, we'll work out everything else later. Um, it's like adding rules to a game you made up with your brother. Like, oh, he... He's doing fine because he can push up off the ground. Well, let's break his legs. Yeah. Yeah, let's just... We'll work out the kinks later. Don't, uh... The legalities, we'll figure it all out. Um, yeah, we'll just break his fucking legs. No worries. Alright, the next one, um... I don't... Psychopath of me to say that. Personally, just one of my favorite ones, I feel like. We've, we've joked about this in the we've past. We've joked about this. For people that don't know me and Elijah, we've known each other since what? Well, you're five days older than me, so I've known you for negative five days. Um, 
We often joke about how we would kill each other, which sounds awful. It, it really sounds awful. It upsets a lot of people. Um, it's all out of love, though. It gets pretty funny. It, it gets pretty funny. I so, the next one is uh, Cement Shoes. Um, there's been one confirmed in the States that that a gang or mob has um, put one of their victims in five-gallon buckets and filled it with cement, their legs filled it with cement, and threw them into a river. And the reason why it was confirmed is because the body washed up on a shore somewhere because they waited they didn't wait long enough to throw them in the river so the cement wasn't fully cured oh, so, it just, like, so like off? some there was like some air bubbles in the cement so it like floated oh. up huh. that's but other than that it's it's probably a very useful way to kill somebody yeah, I feel like drown, like personally, like in your own mind, I guess drowning is probably one of the worst ways to die. Just because, like, you know, which I heard, I've heard that, like, when you're, oh, shit, but when you're drowning, um, like, you pass out before you die anyways. It's like, yeah, you're struggling to breathe, but because you, like, have no oxygen, you just pass out, and then you don't actually ever know that you're died, dying, dead. I don't know. I need to drink, I guess. <laughs> but I, um, I read somewhere it says like, not that they kill people this way, but like se concrete shoes, cement shoes, or they called it the uh, Chicago overcoat, I guess because well, I guess a lot of people do shit die in Chicago. Um. They, like, they would, the people would already be dead, and, like, people in, like, mafias or whatever would do this to, like, dispose of the body, because by the time the concrete, like, the con they would sink to the bottom of the ocean, or wherever, body of water, hopefully is deep enough, um, by the time they got there, they would be, like, their body, like, they wouldn't rise up to the surface fast enough, like, their body would be decayed enough before they washed up. And then you gotta think... If they drop them into the ocean, even if they're alive or dead, there's gonna be a shark or something that comes by and sees yeah. that body. Why are they waiting until they're dead? Like they could just throw them when they're alive, I guess. Yeah, and then it'd be like, oh, he was swimming. Got he got eaten Chicago by a shark. overcoated. <laughs> That's so terrible. <laughs> just the like the gangs of New York, like oh yeah, he got a. Uh, Chicago overcoat. We gave him the old me. Chicago overcoat. They gave him the old Chicago overcoat. <laughs> <laughs> I did not do New York justice at all with that awful, not even New York accent. I'm so sorry to every New Yorker that had to hear that. Um, okay, number seven. I need you to explain this one a little more because I don't think I understand it. Um, it's called The Breaking Wheel. So, um, essentially, your arms and legs would be tied to a wheel that the torturer or torturess would crank so that the ropes would come closer to the wheel and then pull your arms and legs off. I guess this is also more of a form or a way to get information out of you so they wouldn't like actually kill you i mean i'm i'm sure you would eventually die of blood loss so this happened in europe in the middle ages which i feel like a lot of shit took place in europe in the middle ages oh it was only abolished in 1813 but the last one took place in 1841 i mean most people use this as like a like a like a fetish these days like sexual fetish what the fuck no <laughs> <laughs> ew 
Yeah. I don't think I've ever, not that I'm complaining, don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Apparently it's called Catherine Wheel because it was like first used for the execution of St. Catherine. When I was doing this research, I saw a lot, like with each one of these different categories, I saw a lot of St. Catherine. <laughs> Maybe St. Catherine was a whore. Who knows? <laughs> St. Catherine of Alexandria. Maybe she, maybe she just deserved to well, die. Well, she was sentenced to be executed on one of these devices for reusing to renounce her Christian belief. Huh. Yeah, she deserved to die. I get <laughs> I feel like that's going to offend a lot of religious people. We might take that out in post. Probably not. It's fine. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I really don't believe you on like the breaking wheel fetish i've seen it on like family guy and stuff okay that sounds like an accurate source of information as much as i love seth MacFarlane, who knows the simpsons accurate though okay so i typed in a uh, breaking wheel sex fetish and uh i'm a little scared to click on these breaking wheel Hold on, we're looking it up. I gotta turn my safe search off. I don't even wanna... Fifty Shades of Medieval. More pain than pleasure. Oh, there's no... Oh my god. <laughs> I don't... Uh, I don't understand, like... How do you get off this way? How do you I'm, get off when you're trying to focus on not dying? I mean... I need to... Serial killers are pretty fucked up in the head. But it's just like, okay, but not every person that enjoys BDSM is a serial killer. They might be in their mind. They might. Well, maybe that that is their kink, I guess. It just I remember like not that we're kink shaped, but I like saw this vine from Forever Go, and this guy. It's like this one guy by himself, but he's like playing like two different people, and like which was happened in Vine a lot, and he's just like, don't don't kink shame me, and like the like the guy, but like the person too, the same guy was like, but kink shaming is my kink, and it was just like. I don't, it's so stupid. That was just an <laughs> awful tangent. But it's just like, I'm not here to judge anyone. Do what you gotta do. But I feel like if you have to, like, have, like, knives sticking into your pupils in order for you to come, like, you might need some psychiatric help. But who am I to say anything? Okay, uh, the next one seems pretty horrific um it's called saw torture and most of the things that i found about it were they would tie you upside down and then start sawing you in half like through your like starting at your butt and then <laughs> because That's so terrible <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, that's so terrible. <laughs> but because you were upside down, all the blood rushed straight to your head and kept you alive. So you were completely helpless while people were cutting you in half and watching you basically watch yourself die the, this these people coming up with these things like these awful ways to die this was also medieval not are, like lately right i would hope not. i mean you never know right with yeah. what the government is covering up right like so, have you seen dexter have you seen jeffrey epstein did not kill himself uh but anyways um <laughs> Next thing you know, I accidentally killed myself. <laughs> but anyways, like the people that were coming up with these ideas were obviously very educated. Like they had to know that hanging them upside down would keep them alive. Yeah. Like it's not like, like, you know, some hillbilly. Like they've done this before. Like Yeah. Like they've tested it out. Which, you know, a lot of serial killers do, you know, on uh, animals. Although, I, I really feel 
This is no dig at the government, and I'm drunk, so what doesn't matter? So they have this, like, this drawing on Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, that drawing. <laughs> like, they have multiple bodies lined up. They're, like, <coughs> watching these other people die while they're tied up on the ground. Because they know they're about to get it. I don't know. Would you want to watch yourself die, or do you just want to, like... Nah, fucking... Kill me quick. I just, yeah. I think that's what a lot of people would prefer, and I think people caught on to that. Not like, like they killed him, and they're like, well, that, you know, that didn't really teach him a lesson. <laughs> he might do it again. We just, we had to torture him this time. Yeah. Kill yeah. him dead. But do you think that people, like, liked doing that? Like, people liked doing the killing? Yeah. Oh, definitely. A hundred percent, yes. I would not. I, I don't. I don't think I could watch someone die at my doing. No, because you're not a sick fuck. But there are sick fucks out there. Like I was reading on that. Uh, um, shit. It was like real life villain, Wikipedia or whatever, and real life villains wiki page. And it has, like, this whole, like, whole Wikipedia website, and there's this guy named Peter Scully. And this is going to get really fucked up, um, but, you know, long story short he, short, he would basically, like, he owned this, like, website on the dark web, which I don't know if you've heard enough, like, anything about that. But it's basically, like, this part of the internet that's, like, un, uncharted, basically, doesn't get like it's not monitored i guess by like whoever is in charge of the internet is that is there like a company or a government agency that's in charge of the internet i don't know yeah i'm sure there is but i don't like i don't know what that is probably like that was cyber security a, or something no it's it was on a uh, american dad episode of course <laughs> i love this this is how you get all your information um, oh, so basically what I was talking about, about how you saying do people enjoy doing this, like this guy, um, actually I'm not going to talk about what this guy did. His name is Peter Scully. If you want to look it up, that's on you. I personally did not want, I'm not going to say anything about it because it, it's really bad, like too bad for me to say here. There was this, there was this video that came up online. It obviously wasn't on YouTube. But it was on, like, the dark web, and I'm sure you can find it if yeah. you look it up on the internet. Which you don't. Don't do that, but... But, um, it was... I guess it was called Three Guys, One Hammer. And they they called a taxi driver to come pick them up, because they were in the middle of nowhere. And as soon as the taxi driver got there, they pulled the taxi driver out and started, like, beating the shit out of him just just because they like to do it yeah that's what i'm saying people like to kill like there's people out there that like to kill people so when you say like do you like do you think there's people that could do that most definitely absolutely uh, there would be people lining up to do that that's i could i could never i personally could never obviously because i'm not a psychopath but and apparently Neither is Elijah. So now we're going to move on to number nine, which is? Um, obviously, or personally, this is one of my worst fears. Um, going skydiving and your parachute not opening. And your reserve parachute not opening. <laughs> I mean, I guess there's been a lot more people than not that survive this i don't know how but <laughs> they uh they they land on like a bed of moss or something like yeah. just randomly and they survive skydiving and their parachute not opening but uh the odds of dying from skydiving is less than the odds of dying from a car accident I feel like dying from a car accident is like, like you could die from a car accident at any time. I feel like, like it's not uncommon. Like it's sad. It really is sad, but it's not like, 
uncommon. But I have two stories about this skydiving thing. One, my, my mom has this friend named Sherry. And she was like telling me, this was like a few years ago, that she goes sky like she used to go skydiving a lot. And um she like you know, jumped out of the plane, did did what you normally do, parachute open, but when she landed, like she landed wrong and like broke both of her legs. But she said it like no nonchalant. She's like, Oh yeah, both my legs just broke. Like no it was like no big deal. Like when you jump out of a plane, you just, like, ex- like not that you expect something bad to happen, but you just, like, if something bad does happen, it's not like you can blame it on anyone but yourself. Are you falling fast as fuck through the air? Like, and you hit the ground and just your legs break? Like, imagine, imagine you hitting the ground from jumping out of a plane with no parachute, and you don't die instantly. Like... Do you, no. do you do you scream? <laughs> but I mean, but her parachute did open. Okay. And like she just landed the wrong way. Like she said, she landed too much on her heels, and like the shock just broke her legs. But she was like, "Yeah, like it, my legs just broke." Like she was in like, and I've never done it again because I broke my fucking legs. <laughs> <laughs> like she just, she still goes skydiving. Second story also has to do with skydiving and legs. Um, my dad used to be a flight school instructor for the army either my dad or my dad someone my dad knew i don't know and he said that in order to pass flight school or jump school you had to jump out of the plane you had to land like in this target basically and this guy i guess jumped out of the plane landed the wrong way which i guess is a common thing broke both of his legs but he landed outside of the target so he crawled he crawled to the, the target where he had to land, and he passed jump school, and then immediately got rid, like rushed to the hospital. Is that cheating? Is it cheating? I don't know. I mean, I feel like when you're in combat, like... <clears throat> yeah, as long as you gotta do what there. you gotta do, I guess. I don't know. Um, so I guess on average... Um, the amount of people that die from skydiving. I feel like we're so behind on drinking. I'm about to just finish this. The amount of people that die from skydiving is around 23 people a year. Out of like the 3 million people that do it. Oh god. So. so I mean the skydiving's awful but just the bottom of the back cup is awful too. The, the average or the uh percentage of people that die from skydiving is like point zero 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 seven, and but then it's like, okay that's that's fine and all but like 23 people is still like a lot like i could probably only name 23 people i know off the top of my head like imagine if they just all died from skydiving <laughs> i don't know that's a weird way to think I, about things i but... feel like you would die like if both of your parachutes didn't open i feel like you would die of like too much stress like like a heart attack or a stroke or something before you hit the ground maybe but like going back to what you said like if you do hit the ground and you don't die instantly what like what do you do it's i feel like you would break every bone in your body but you just wouldn't be dead yet shit i i would rather die yeah, I mean, I would rather die in any of these situations. I would just rather die. Like, the whole crucifixion thing where you're saying, like, people would, like, stand up to, like, try and live longer. Like, nah, son. Like, take me out. Like, I'm not trying to prolong this any longer than I have to. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that one's, like, worse because, like, you're watching it happen and you don't you don't know if you're going to live or not. Like, I feel like at, like... When you are jumping out of the plane, you have to have already made your peace with the world. Like, I feel like this is a, maybe not, I don't know. I don't think I'll ever go skydiving. I don't think I'll ever bring myself to do it. But, like, I feel like when you jump out of a plane with, what is, what are parachutes made out of, like, nylon or something like that? Sure. And, like, when you jump out of a plane, like, if you die... Like, you have to accept that you're just, you you could die, but you're going to do it anyways. 
Which I get, you know, don't be scared to do things. I know a lot of people say that they feel, like, really alive after they go skydiving. So apparently uh, parachutes are, like, inflated as well. And if you get a parachute that's partially inflated, that could cause you to fall faster. Like inflated, like a uh, bouncy house inflated? Yeah. Like the, the, I don't know what they're called, ridges. Are inflated? Yeah, they're inflated with air. And if they're not inflated all the way, it can make you fall faster. Than just? Than being fully inflated. What if they're not inflated at all? And you're fucked. I think in any situation, I just would not jump out of a fucking plane. The end. That's it. Like, I don't know. Just One person on, on Google or a website asked, what if your plane is crashing or <laughs> is going to crash? Can you jump out of the plane with a parachute? Like, people have checked, have had their bags checked with parachutes because they're scared that their plane is going to crash, so. But doesn't, don't those take, like, a long time to, like, assemble? Yeah, so you have to be at least a thousand feet above, like, the ground to use a parachute because it takes a while to open up and then yeah yeah so you have to be at least a thousand feet as well i feel like if your plane's crashing like that's kind of selfish of you to just use yourself i don't think that's selfish (laughs) i mean maybe if you have children are you throwing your children out of the plane on the parachute like you hold them okay i i don't know maybe it's not i don't think it's selfish at all depending on how you handle the situation i guess but uh like, at, at, if your plane is crashed or is, like, going down, I feel like I don't, like, oh, well, I got a parachute. Fuck everybody else. Bye. Like, I'm going to be like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Like, I'm, like, you know, freaking out. I'm not going to be like, oh, shit, I brought a parachute. Like, I don't know. Maybe if you're already in that mindset that you're going to have to use that parachute, if you, like. Like, oh, fuck. I'm going to die or I can jump out. Like, the, pl- like the captain comes over like, everyone we're going like you know we're going down or whatnot and uh like oh well good thing i brought my parachute do the good thing i was prepared so when the oxygen masks drop down do the flight attendants like keep you seated or like are you free to just run out and jump out the back like i think they have to keep you seated i mean i don't think there's no place to jump out where are you jumping out at where you entered i don't know I've only flown twice, which is a lot, like, a lot of people haven't flown at all, but... I've never been on a plane. We're flying for our honeymoon in, like, a year? Like, a year from now? I don't know. So now, now thinking about this, are you going to check a parachute with your bags? (laughs) No, (laughs) no. Because I personally, like, I know they say that... Like, flying is safer than driving, and I, I, you know, I believe that to some extent, but I don't know. I feel like any time you get on in any aircraft or car or anything, like, you just have to have already made your peace, I, I guess. I don't know. That's just... So, AB, ABC News says there is an average of five small plane crashes each day approximately 500 deaths annually yeah i mean but those aren't like commercial airlines those are like personal planes i mean that just happened well i guess that was a helicopter i mean kobe bryant that's still fresh we don't need to talk about that yeah so i don't know i don't know i'm not gonna check a parachute i do know that all right parachutes are expensive as fuck too wait where do you even buy a parachute like dicks can you go to? You can buy a no canoe. way. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna Google it. I'm gonna Where look to on Amazon. Buy a parachute. Amazon. Um, apparently you can you can get them at Walmart. You can find coffins on Walmart. Like Walmart.com is the goat. You can buy anything. Oh, parachute. 
No, not parachute. Pants. Sky Saver Emergency Rescue Parachute. Oh, I Googled parachute Walmart. and it's like those parachutes from like uh, gym class. That you throw up in the air. Like, like from little kids gym class where like, yeah, you like have the handle and you would like run over it. That shit used to be fun as fuck too. Um, so these parachutes at Walmart are a thousand and eighty seven dollars. <laughs> Oh, they have like a running parachute. It's like $10. Like where you run with it on your back. Um, you cannot buy a parachute on Amazon. So there's that. So our, our tenth one is uh, being burned alive. Roasted alive. I heard somewhere. I want to say it's like Fear Factor or something. I don't know. Shout out to Joe Rogan. Whatever the fuck that guy does. Um... Being burned alive is, like, the worst way to die. Like, the absolute worst way to die. I mean, yeah, like... I'm sure it kills you slowly. We are saying die too much. Damn it. I haven't been very good in the last, like, few times. <sighs> I'm too drunk to even remember, to, like, what I'm saying. So, uh... I looked up... Burnings, like, being burned alive in the United States... And the last one I saw was in the 1980s, where they they burned inmates. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny? That's not funny. Let's not forget that, you know, they burned Jews by the thousands, by the millions. Yeah. They just burned them. I imagine that's pretty, uh... I guess there was this, this method... Called necklacing. What the fuck? That where... sounds like some porn thing. Isn't that a porn thing? Necklacing. I, I don't think that's. Were they like, a... like jizz like on your neck? Is that called necklacing? <laughs> that's it's something. It, I think it is called necklacing. Okay. Well, <laughs> this this version not as enjoyable of necklacing is where they force a rubber tire filled with a like a a flammable liquid around someone's chest and arms and then set it on fire which would then take the victim about 20 minutes to die so because it would only be burning like around their neck no 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 no. they would force it like around their shoulders and oh so it's like around their like around their arms so they can't get out of it oh and they would just set them on fire. Yeah. Damn. Well, that's definitely not the porn idea or whatever. <laughs> uh, definitely not anything legal anyways. Um, that sounds terrible. Because I just feel like burning your... I don't know. Like the smell of burning flesh. Like I read somewhere where like... Uh, like... Um, When people get electrocuted by, like, the electric chair or whatever, they put, um, like, a wet sponge in the room because it's supposed to, like, absorb the smell of burning flesh, which apparently smells awful. Which I burnt myself on, like, straightener or curling iron in the oven or whatever. But it's not, like, enough to where you're smelling burning flesh. But I also heard that like when they would burn people in concentration camps like the smell for like miles around like wherever they had those concentration camps like people would be vomiting because it smelled so bad i can't even imagine i can't imagine uh i have like chills right now so i guess i used to uh burn like um african-american like slaves because they were fooling around with <clears throat> white women. They used to douse them in coal, coal oil and hang them by the neck and then light them on fire. What the fuck? That's so terrible. That just... I don't need to get into the whole racism thing, but what the fuck, honestly? Because right. it's not like... I don't know. But like the I, just the idea of burning, 
just sounds so terrible. Like, I burned myself on the stove the other day, and it hurt for, like, three days. Like, just, like, <laughs> this little line right here burnt for, like, three days. And you see people who, like, people survive stuff like that. I can, I can never imagine, like, that, that pain. Because it's, like, I don't know. This sounds so terrible. So I found this thing online called the gridiron. It was basically a grill for roasting people. What the fuck? That sounds like some, like, shit, what's the movie I'm thinking of? I don't know. Like, Saw, maybe? Or, uh, like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Some weird fucked up. Like, some weird, yeah, some weird fucked up. Not, like, well and thought out, like, you know, crucifying people or escapism like it's just like all right let's burn them like you know with some hill jack that thought of that like that movie uh hills have eyes some like weird hillbillies that live in the mountains yeah like let's let's just burn them yeah so i guess this the grid iron was an iron grid that was placed over a fire of or like burning coals that would like broil a person but on this website it says that fortunately they didn't could you stop fucking driving that loud sorry we're trying to do something here okay so it would broil the person yeah but but fortunately the website says that they didn't eat the person probably <laughs> literally says probably they probably did <laughs> what the fuck I feel like if you have to point out like well on the bright side uh, they didn't eat the person maybe like maybe they just like like normal cooking they let it go too long and it was burnt oops. and so they just had to oh oops we cooked Charles a little too long. Damn it. <laughs> like, get another one. That's... They probably did need them. Probably. Okay, so... That's... That's our list of ten. But I also have this one honorable mention that's... Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Do a few honorable mentions. So, uh... This one's not... I mean, it's it would that would suck, but I guess in 2007 there was this guy. He was just enjoying his day, walking down the sidewalk, and there happened to be a car accident right next to him, and the car struck a fire hydrant, and when when he hit a fire hydrant, knock it off the ground. There's bound to be some pressure behind it. Yeah. And the pressure of the water shot the fire hydrant straight at his skull and killed him instantly. Damn. That's just so unlucky. Like, I feel like there's we could go on, like, this huge rant, a whole other episode of just, like, unlucky ways to die. Yeah. Just, like, I don't Just so... Do you remember that show? Uh, it was always oddly sexual. But you know what I'm talking about? I, I think I do know what you're talking about. Die. Yes, yes. And like, the one, I remember, two, one, I should not have been watching this as an 11 year old. I should not. But uh, two of those things that I like remember for some reason, one, there's like this group of teenagers that like took shrooms or like ecstasy or some, you know, some hallucinogenic drug and one of them like went off the diving board into a pool but the pool had no water and so like he he basically like splatted on the bottom of the pool and died and then another one which thinking back on it thinking back on it now when i was 11 years old i had no idea what was going on but basically this guy was having this girl over and he like took Viagra or something. So like, you know, you know what Viagra does. Everyone should know what Viagra does. Um, 
And so, like, he took, like, two Viagra, which I guess is the prescriptive amount, or, like, the recommended dosage, just two pills. Well, like, this girl coming over wanted to, like, you know, have sexual relations for an extended period. <laughs> he, she wanted to fuck for a long time, all right? Like, she specified this? And, uh, so she, like, he went to the bathroom and she, like, crushed up Viagra and put it in his water. So at this point, he's had, like, four Viagra, and his his dick just, like, exploded. Like, there was so much blood that, like, went to it. It just, like, you ever put a hot dog in the microwave? And, yeah. like, the end just, like, yeah. that basically happened to his penis. Ouch. And me, and he died from that? Yeah, he died, because I guess he bled out or something. There's just, like, a whole bunch. We should, I don't know, I should not have been watching that show. But I feel like we all watched it when we shouldn't have. Yeah. And honestly, what the fuck? Who made that? Who was like, this is a great idea? I don't know. Definitely had to be a serial killer. Definitely had to be someone who smoked crack. Anyways. (laughs) (laughs) So speaking of weird deaths, apparently there's these people that die from having sex with animals. Yeah, bestiality. There's a whole movie on Netflix about some guy who had sex with a horse. But, like, the, he took this horse cock and it, like, ripped his anus open have and he you, died. Have he you died. ever seen a horse cock? No. It's, like, the size <laughs> of my fucking forearm. And, and probably the shape of my forearm. Like... No. That's I terrible. I have... Seen a whale dick though, and legend has it it's the size of a school bus. Jesus. <laughs> like a blue whale yeah. dick. No, cannot ever say I've seen a horse cock. Or funny story, if we're on the like the topic of dick, we used to have this dog named Rusty, and uh, he was not neutered. Is that what it is? So he wasn't like fixed or anything and like I think I was like eight or nine and I was at home alone with Rusty the dog and his like red rocket popped out. Well, I thought there was something wrong with it. Like I thought like this, like I was wondering why the skin wasn't like on it. So I call my dad like eight years old. I'm like, dad, there's something wrong with the dog. Like his, his pee pee is like, there's something wrong with it. My dad was like, no, there's not. Like, and hung up on me. <laughs> and, like, I, I, like, remember, like, nothing ever got said about that again because, like, it went back in or whatever. But anyways, we don't need to talk about dick. That's weird. Um, one thing you did mention to Elijah before we started recording. And, uh, Mr. Maternity, if you ever, in some, some fashion, some way, you hear this, I just want to know why you thought I was a dumb for saying this, but, um, basically, I, I, I was talking to Elijah about how many times has, like, one example I can think of is, like, how many times has a man or a woman, they're both equally as evil, um, like, a, was about to kidnap someone, but because, like, one small thing happened, like, a car drove in front of the street, and, like, the kid, like, like, they couldn't see the kid anymore. Like, how many times has something bad happened? Was How many times has something bad been about to happen, but because of, like, one small change in the universe that it didn't? Like, I don't... There's no way that we're ever going to know. But I just think about that a lot, and I don't know why. I guess I watched the butterfly effect one too many times. I don't know. I guess this... This, uh... This woman named Elena, 60 years old, was carrying a mason jar full of something liquid. And she was using one of the uh, stainless steel straws. And she, she collapsed. She fell on the ground. And the stainless steel, like, straw entered her eyelid and like pierced through her brain and killed her 
Damn, that is so unlucky. <laughs> if Emily, Emily, I know you're going to hear this, and I just want to say that maybe uh, metal stalls aren't the way to go after all. <laughs> <laughs> maybe let's stick to the paper ones that... No, those taste like shit. All right, so that was our top 10 list of the worst ways to die. Um, I'm going to post some links in the description if there's any further things you want to read into of the research that we did and just some interesting things. Um, Elijah, where can they find you? Um, my Instagram is ElijahDills7, and that's about it. All right, very simple. As always, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at emorgs09. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the second episode of Dinkin' and Sinkin', and as always, stay thirsty.